right? So do you guys have any questions? So we went through basically why there are so many microbes and why there are so many viruses in the, um, in the um, marine environment and actually all environments. Then we went through the calorimetry stuff, and you guys have seen this twice now, so you should have it. Do you guys remember these ideas of how you set up these experiments of where you mix viruses with just the bacteria or with just DOM and see top-down predation and so forth? Those are based on what sort of, uh, who did the first set of those experiments? Go on, anybody? One paper. It's Furman, yeah. Wilcox and Furman, right? So you got to know that paper. That's, that's a really important one. Okay. All right, and then, then basically the take home message is, is that, of course, viruses kill off and lower the, uh, the total number of microbes there. But while they're doing that, they increase the rate at which the system is working and you get higher uh, uh, energy output. All right, and so then we went through basically this stuff here, microbial, uh, the uh, microbial viral dynamics, and we talked about the top-down thing, the culturing problem and how we got around it, right, with the metagenomics, and then the kill the winner uh, red queen uh, hypotheses. Good, does that sound familiar? Do you guys have, um, I'm just gonna flip through them, right, this is the old metagenomics, uh, um, basically this always, there's unknowns, the idea of how you do, what's this stuff called here? What program would you use to do this analysis? Right. This is facts, right? This is an analysis. Using facts, what type of analysis is this? What's this called? Monte Carlo. Monte Carlo, good. All right. This is the uh, kill the winner dynamics. Originally, this was put forward as more of that you would kill it off the dominant species and you could change the biogeochemistry of the system, right? That's kind of how Thinkstat originally uh, proposed it. We don't actually think it's that way now. We think it's more that we're changing strength level stuff, right? Does that make sense? Okay. And that comes out of this work by uh, Lin Lin and uh, Beltron. And this, do you guys remember this? Where you. Uh, we basically, if you look over time, if you look at the metagenomes of either the viruses or the uh, bacteria, what you see is that the dominant things remain dominant in the system. All right, and then this is, uh, again, facts, and then this is Maxify, right? And we'll go back and talk about Maxify a little bit more. And then finally, um, this would be the, the model and I think this model is actually pretty close to really what's happening out there, is that you have a particular, what we would call a species, which would be like this black species, that's being uh, predated by this group of viruses, and this group of viruses, uh, what is happening is that one strain of the black comes up, a particular virus comes in and wipes it out, and if you look at a community level, you have the black, the blue, and the green species, and this is why you get the same geochemistry, even though you have a really rapid turnover in the system. Good? Does that all make sense to everybody? And are you happy with that? Okay. And that's probably the model for how these things are working. Then this is, uh, this is the stuff out of the sludge, and this is just to give you a feel how we see this. Um, you guys remember this part where Basically, the things that are changing in microbial or microbial genomes that are most obvious are uh, viral attachment sites, so things associated with the surface, which we would call primary defenses, right? And then secondary defenses, uh, we see CRISPR elements in lots of these systems, but of course, this is also restriction enzymes and all the other ways that uh, uh, microbes uh, protect themselves from invading DNAs. For us, when you do this yeah. green, blue, and black species, how do you now get a sense of the um, uh, host and the host range of those uh, phage? Because you don't, really yeah. know. How do you deal? How do you sort of get in a, a picture of how broad the yeah. host is? Yeah. So that's a great question, and I'll I'll touch on this in the second part of the talk okay. a little bit. But basically, um, what I think it must be is that you can find like. So the culturing Different stuff is curves. probably yeah. the best data, right? And yeah. we can find like literally hundreds of phages that will attack 
the same species of bacteria. Okay. But those will tell you strain differences. And my belief is, is actually that probably the phage, why they're strain specific, they're actually probably jumping different mm -hmm. species. I see. Yeah. That's what I would guess. Okay. I'm not, I but don't you, you don't think it could be broader than species? You think you cannot have phage that would attack a bunch of different uh, OTUs or whatever species within one right. genus? Right, so there is a little bit of evidence uh -huh. that that could be happening. Uh -huh. So there's, uh, so your lytic phage, like your T7-like guys, uh -huh. seem to be much more strain specific, let's okay. say. Where some of your lysogenic ones seem to be a little bit more broad host range. And we definitely know of phage that are really good at switching uh, even between species, they're built to do it. And there's reports of things that can actually jump um, even broader host range okay. than that. Yeah. But it's mostly from, you don't have enough markers on the sequence to yeah. sort of there are co association or things like that. You can definitely you? can see co association, mm -hmm. you can mm -hmm. watch things go up and down together. But there's, uh, there's other methods that people are using now a lot uh, where the I mean, one probably the easiest um, is to label the phages and then see what they'll hold on to and then grab what bacteria yeah. they'll hold on to. Yeah. There was a lot, I mean, there used to be a, a whole bunch of that stuff was done. Um, I mean, there's been, it's gone in waves. So way yeah. back in the yeah. uh, 40s and 50s, there were a whole bunch of studies of this type. Mm -hmm. And then in the, uh, in the 90s, there was actually a couple Japanese groups that would do single uh, phage attacks on bacteria, and they would show that the invasion of different bacteria by uh, phage that were supposedly specific. And often those are abortive infections, so it's almost like they can get in, they can inject their mm -hmm. DNA, but then they're stuck, which is probably important for horizontal gene transfer. Okay. And then there's, uh, and then, uh, and Curtis Settle and, and we, our lab had also done some work like this using fluorescent label and stuff. And now uh, Sullivan is doing, I don't know what he calls it. He calls it, but it's the same idea, but he what he's trying to do is in, uh, to follow the phage as it's injected and then sort out the cells and then figure out which cell was attacked okay, by the yeah. thing. He's calling that like viral tagging or something. I don't, he's just giving okay. it a name. I don't. So they like, is it like heavy <laughs> DNA? What? Is it like heavy DNA they, they inject? No, in I think his stuff is all fluorescence, oh, right? Okay. So there was heavy DNA. There was actually a lot done also with um, micro auto radiography mm. and, uh, and um, radio label DNA back in the day. And of course, that's all been lost because yeah. it's not, you know, it's pre internet yeah. so. <laughs> so nobody <laughs> has ever looked at that. So I think it's called, I think he calls it viral tagging, and I think what he's trying to do is uh, uh, link hosts yeah. to, uh, to, to uh, phage, is what he's trying to do there. <coughs> and then, so you see the host doing it. The other thing is, is that this is just the roseophage one, so, um, and I just put this up here to remind you that the other thing that's happening, of course, is that the phage is adjusting. And, and there are, uh, this is nice because it's, Actually, the, the main differences were in the tail protein between different rows of phages isolated from there. And there are like really cool systems, like there's uh, uh, actually things which I become important for Jeremy Barr's project, where there are systems that uh, 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 for the telophages, where they actually used a reverse transcriptase uh, mechanism to induce or to put in errors right, into the tail fibers, onto the, the ends of the tail fibers, so that they can switch host range, mm -hmm. which is a, kind of a cool thing. Um, I do have a question. Yeah. So with what Jeremy Barr is working on right now, um, as well as what you previously found, would you say they're equally important, the uh, capsid mutations, as well as the tail fiber variability? Probably. I would imagine, so you're talking decoration, so yeah. are the decoration proteins on the capsid as interesting as the tail fibers? Yes, probably. Um, but they are. Be but we wouldn't even know what the decoration proteins are in this genome, to tell you the truth, because we've never actually looked at that. Okay. So I think so, yeah. And for those of you that aren't familiar with it, like the capsids have these often uh, beautiful structures, literally, sticking out of them, and hooks, and uh, different domains sticking out of them, and they're called decoration proteins. And 
Additionally, those were thought of as uh, helping the phage find its host, just like the tail fibers would. Okay. Um, what Jeremy, of course, is uh, arguing is that those decoration proteins are important for holding on to things like mucus and so forth. In fact, you should mm -hmm. talk. Uh, have you guys talked about your model yet? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, you should talk because it's it's mm -hmm. pretty cool. That's what she's interested in, and okay. we think cool. that uh, uh, what we think might be going on there is mm -hmm. uh, of interest. All right, so you see all these red queen dynamics, and remember red queen stuff. So if you haven't read this, this is a good evolutionary dynamic to know about. It's one of the most obvious ones in all ecosystems. I think it's it's the lion versus the the zebra, right? Um, uh, remember that the one that the quote that I always like is that a zebra is not the best way to eat grass, right? It's really actually about getting away from the lion, and that's why they build themselves that way. So, so remember that that we tend to think of microbes mostly about what they're eating, but actually, probably it's predation that's the main thing. Okay. Any questions about that before I jump into the second part? Yes, Ben. I have a question about the. The host specificity, right? Uh -huh. So imagine when viruses first started out, right? Yeah. They all they want to do is get their DNA into a cell, probably, right, yes. or whatever the the X.